tree recursion gives rise to tree-shaped processes. So a tree-shaped process happens whenever executing the body of a recursive function makes more than one call to that function. The examples we've seen so far just make one recursive call, but now we'll make multiple recursive calls. And to do that, we're going to bring back our old friend, Fibonacci. So the first nine elements of the Fibonacci sequence are 0, 1, and then always the previous two elements sum together. 0 and 1 makes 1, 1 and 1 makes 2, etc., all the way up to 21. Interesting thing about the Fibonacci sequence is it actually grows very large very quickly. If we go out to the 35th element, it's over 5 million. Okay, how do we define Fibonacci? Well, we've defined it before iteratively, but now we'll write a recursive version where to compute the nth Fibonacci number, Fib n, we'll first enumerate the base cases, which are the first two Fibonacci numbers. If n is 1, we return 0. If n is 2, we return 1. Otherwise, we'll return the sum of the last two Fibonacci numbers. A nice direct implementation of the Fibonacci sequence. Let's code it up. So the base case was n being equal to 1. Then we return the first Fibonacci number. If n is 2, we return the second. Otherwise, we return previous two sum together. Okay, so if I load this file and then compute the first Fibonacci number that's zero, the second one is one, the fifth one is three, and the ninth one is 21, just as I said. And I told you they get big fast. The 10th is 34, the 20th is over 4,000, the 30th is over 500,000, and the 35th is still computing, 5,700,000. Now that took a while, even though computers are really fast right now. Why is that? Well, it turns out that the tree recursive process that we went through in order to compute 5 million was a big one. Let's take a look. So the computational process of FIB, the one we just defined, creates this tree structure. We're calling FIB6 makes two recursive calls, one to FIB4 and one to FIB5. The FIB4 comes first. How do we compute FIB4? Well, that involves FIB2 and FIB3. And FIB3 involves FIB1 and FIB2. And those are all base cases. So in order to get the fact that FIB4 is 2, we're building this whole tree structure. And to compute FIB5, we build an even larger tree structure, where we sum FIB3 and FIB4. Computing FIB4, again, involves computing FIB2 and FIB3, etc. And then we sum together all these numbers in this tree structured process in order to figure out that FIB6 is the number 5. So what order do we do this in? Well, we could add print statements to figure it out. We start out by trying to compute FIB6, which needs to compute FIB4, which needs to compute FIB2, which is a base case, the first dot that I've drawn along this line. In order to complete computing FIB4, we need FIB3, which includes FIB1 and FIB2. Now we can compute FIB3 is 1. Now we can compute FIB4 is 2. So we have one element of the sum that gives us the final answer, FIB6, but we need to get the other one as well, which means reaching this base case, this one, in order to compute FIB3, which is 1, and then we compute FIB4 again, which is 2. 1 and 2 is 3, and 3 and 2 is 5. So that's the order in which we compute these things. Now, how do we visualize that in order to verify that that's the case? Well, as part of your project, I gave you a function called trace. 
It's part of the UCB module. And we haven't used it up until this point, but we'll use it now. What it does is it'll print out whenever a function is called and whenever we return from that function. So this is the same ucb.py file that I gave you in your hog project. And now when I call fib6, I'll see a trace of everything that happens. So fib6 calls fib4, which calls fib2, which returns 1. Also calls fib3, which calls fib1, which returns 0. And fib2 returns 1. Finally, fib3 returns 1. And etc. And so we get a trace of the same process that I illustrated on the slide, but this happens automatically just by adding this uh, trace. This is called a decorator with that at symbol. Next lecture, I'll tell you how decorators work. They're really quite simple and they involve higher order functions. Okay, so we visualized this tree recursive process and we realized that it gets pretty big. So if I do fib10, all of a sudden I have quite a bit of work to do. And when I call fib20, well, that just goes on and on and on, doesn't it? Some of these lines are so long that they're even wrapping around. Okay. So one thing you may have noticed is that within this tree recursive computation, there is quite a bit of repetition. In fact, it's highly repetitive. Viv is called on the same argument multiple times. Not just the base cases, but higher up in the tree. We see, for instance, that fib4 involves computing all of this stuff, and then we compute it all again, which seems quite wasteful, and it is. So most of the time when you implement something like this, you avoid that extra computation. I won't tell you exactly how today, but I will tell you that these very slow computational processes can often be sped up um, and the trick to speeding this one up is just to remember the results of the Fibonacci numbers you've already computed. 